Rogers, so good to see you again. I wish we could do our interview in person. I know it's been over a year since our set visit, but congratulations on this movie. I've seen it like five times now. You know how much I love it. I'm like thank so you. appreciative of your time today um, because oh, I have so many you. questions about after we collided, but I kind of wanted to start at the beginning. I know you may have talked about this kind of with some fans in the past, but when did you first, when did After We Collided first come across your desk? What happened with you getting that script and getting involved in this movie from the get-go? Um, I was in the middle of editing this Netflix movie. I was doing Falling in Love in LA. I got a call from my agent at UTA saying, um, Jen Gibgott, who I've been, I've known, our kids are in school together. I mean, um, and I loved her work and she's like, she has a, she has a script. Um, um, there's this movie they put out and, and based on a book, do you want to read it and meet with them? And I said, yeah. And I said, sure. Yeah. Why not? Um, um, oh. so I watched, I think I watched the movie first and I started reading the script and I put the script down partly cause I wanted to read the book more importantly. Got it. I just wanted to, you know, and but I was also like, oh shoot, I really want to read the first book. Yeah. I read <laughs> These are big books. I, I know, know, it's so much. <laughs> I was like, I have lunch tomorrow, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mentioned this, I like I gave my two daughters, I'm like, read this book. Like I'll pay a 10, you know, read the book and then help me. And I started reading it and then I was like, stop reading the book. <laughs> But I was like, all right, I get this. You know, I'm curious what they want to do. And I met with Anna and Jen at a restaurant in the in Studio City on May 13th. Oh my gosh. Set up today. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I kind of just listened to them. And Anna was like, you know, she just kind of, uh, Anna's such an honest, straight shooter person. And, you know, where there was a lot of elements she was happy about with the first movie, of course, you know, because they kind of watered it down to get the PG-13 and all that. There was a lot that she was, you know, she felt like she um, disappointed her fandom. So, and she's like, and I was like, so what do you want to make it like? She goes, well, I want to make it like Cruel Intentions. And I was like, I could do that. Um, <laughs> I could do that. And, and, you know, it, my conversation with her was like, I was like, look, you know, I've been a film director. I've been a TV director. Yeah. Um, and this will kind of bridge the gap because it is your universe, you know? So I, I, I want to facilitate your vision as well. And, and we'll just kind of collaborate on this and try to come up with the best movie. Yeah, no, it's great. I didn't realize that you guys had met back in May, and then I think you were announced in like July or August. Like, they held my announcement um, yes. because she, she's like, the fandom will go crazy. Oh my God, yes. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay. I didn't know what she was You didn't about. know what the fan, you didn't know what the- No, I didn't really, I said, you know, I know this world well because of Pretty Little Liars. I know fandoms, um, but, uh, um, yeah, but like it was, what was strange was like, I didn't, I just met with them. And then um, I guess it was like, they're gonna offer you the movie. And, and Anna was like, I need you to talk to Josephine. And I was like, um, maybe I should get an offer first before I blow this meeting with the lead actress. Um, but uh, we did a Skype interview. So cool. Um, yeah, and, and, and that, she was living in Perth with her family, I think. Um, and, you know, uh, I think the first time I talked to her, I was like, I'm not prepared to talk to you. I want to read the books because I hear you're incredibly well read on this stuff. And I, I, I want to have my A game. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you want to have your A game talking to Joe. <laughs> yeah, give me a few days. Uh, uh, yeah. So I quickly <laughs> devoured the books. I'm like, I'm ready to talk to you. Um, awesome. and she was amazing. She was just, you know so articulate, so, you know, wise beyond her years. And we got into some really interesting conversations. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think it's so awesome that you and Joe like had such a great relationship prior to filming. Um, so let's kind of start with the montage at the beginning of After We Collided, because obviously the first film wrapped in a way for movie purposes. I don't think anyone knew what was going to happen after the first movie. Obviously, the book ends pretty abruptly. So what did you do in regards to looking back at the footage for After and Jenny's footage and how you were to put the montage together? Because that was kind of the biggest question I had going into the sequel is, how, how are they going to start it? this movie? Yeah. It was so what kind was of, you know, I completely understood um, both uh, the, the Jenny and, and, and the filmmakers. Uh, you know, filmmaking is all collaborative. So on that they kind of um, closed ended after the first movie. It didn't do us any favors. Um, and I was like, hmm, yeah, we have to reset this. You know, so we had, we had talked about like a, a dream or doing something or, or, you know, but I was like, we just have to reset it. Harden's night. I thought it was going to be on Harden's nightmare. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it originally was. It originally was Harden's Nightmare. Got it. Um, and that's how we shot it, too. Wow. Um, and that's why you see in the trailer, um, I'm never going to leave you. You know, when, when okay. Tessa says, yes. I'm never going to leave you, um, then he wakes up, and then he's in the car. Oh. Got it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I know, yeah. I, I know that. Was I know a lot of the fans were like, what happened to that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, and it, ha it actually happens a lot more in teasers than you think. Like, I mean, you know, yeah. you know because yeah, a lot of dialogue will be included like within, you know, a teaser and then it won't end up making it into the movie. But now that, I mean, at least we get it in the teaser and I know I have a lot of questions about extended scenes and yeah. stuff. No, no, no. That Absolutely. No, that, but, that, but what happened no. was we, when I looked at the completed film, um, I was like, uh oh, uh, if you have it, if you're walking, if you're watching this movie and you, and you don't know the first movie or you don't know the book, you're lost. You yeah. just, you, you're just lost. And, you know, get it. when you set out to make a film, even if it's a sequel, you want it to be able to stand alone. Yes. You know, um, and that's what you're trying to do. So I was like, was literally like three days into editing and I'm like, oh great, I have a problem. Um, <laughs> I have no problem. <laughs> you know, and I was like, and I, I had a great editor, Anita. Yeah. And we would be like, we need previously on after. <laughs> you know, like, right, like TV shows, it, you know? Yes. And I was like, how do we do this? And I started to, I, and then I was like, do we have Jenny's footage from the doc? Yes. And, uh, I started, like while Anita was doing cutting and doing notes, I started going through all the dailies wow. of, of the after footage and we caught a huge break because there was this one moment where um, they stopped shooting, but they didn't call cut. And Joe and Hero were just sitting on the dock. That's amazing. And I was like, oh my God, we can split screen and dissolve Joe. That's um I loved so, that. I was wondering how you guys did that and what type, where that footage was from and if that was going to be used anywhere else, like in the movie. So they, they just didn't yell cut, yell cut and you use that for the montage? Use that. And if you look at it carefully, um, we reversed the footage. So when Hero looks at her, he, it's actually backwards. So you'll see his head turn. It's a little kind of weird. I, well, because it's a dream, yeah. kind of get away with it. I you know? felt like it, well, it was very seamless. And on, and honestly, the first thing, you know, my husband and I said is after we watched that is like, I mean, we have seen the first movie a lot of times, but it was a really, right. really beautiful and like unified montage that if for some reason, you know, a fan or somebody is watching this for the first time and they miss the first one, they'll have an idea. Like, and it was like a really, really great right. way to start it in my opinion. It was, um, it was an, an awesome moment because once we saw, and I like laid in the voiceover as my voice, um, just to see if it works yes. with my bad, my bad English accent. Oh my God. I love, can I have, can I hear that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, and I was so, it was one of those things where I was so excited and it was Jen Gibguts like 50th birth. I, maybe I shouldn't have said 50th. Uh, it was her 40th <laughs> birthday. 
Um, and I knew like Anna would be there and Joe would be there and I really wanted to show this to them. Um, so I think I called Hero and I go, you, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to record this. Oh, so um, you know, uh, and that whole little speech, you know, I, I think I, I took elements from the book. Yeah. You know, um, um, the entire of the world and, you know, um, so he put it on his phone, sent it to me and I cut it in and I went to this party that night and I was like, I got something so cool. Oh my uh, God. They were so excited to see it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's and so awesome. Like, we're, we're able to recap the first movie and reset our movie. Yes. But because of that, that's why, um, that line, I'm never going to leave you is not in the film. Got it. Okay. Uh, during the nightmare, because it's like, well, that there's no... She doesn't need to say that from the nightmare. It didn't make it did, sense. It didn't make sense. I see. No, I, I, yeah, okay. I totally understand. Um, okay, so I have a ton of random questions oh, oh, for oh, you. God. Okay, so the ass swipe line, is that a callback to Dylan and Big Daddy and his role in Big Daddy and, and, and with, D okay, so I guess not. So, so Dylan and- No, maybe. So it's, well, I don't, uh, and I didn't know. So, cause I mean, Dill, they have that line in Big Daddy where he says to Adam Sandler's character, I wipe my own ass. And he's, that's like a line in the movie. And I was wondering if that ass wipe line was, that's probably showing my age in regards to Big Daddy. No, you know what? A, a fan there's so many, actually. There's so many six degrees of everything. Yeah. When you say Big Daddy, <laughs> um, Teo Vandesan, who shot Cruel Intentions, was my cinematographer. He went on to do Big Daddy next. Wow. Um, um, so there, there was that connection. So, so cool. I, you know, in the script, it was asshole. Okay. We thought it was too, it didn't have enough playfulness, that word. Yeah. When yeah. We started shooting it. And I, you know, I'll always give credit to Dylan. Um, you know, like, let's try another word you know, okay, or, or, or maybe Joe even, you know, and then we came up with asswipe. That got it. I think I saw actually a fan, I think had mentioned it in Anna Todd's Facebook group. And I read that as well. And I was like, that's so interesting. I wonder if that was a callback, but may maybe it was in Dylan's own way. <laughs> right. If he had something to do with it. Um, okay. So Christian Vance is a lot more easygoing and friendly in the books, obviously, but Charlie Weber's Vance is more intimidating, maybe even a little bit more like Christian Grey, like in a way, I actually liked the change for the film because I think it's essential to test character in the film specifically but I'm kind of you know just wondering what was the decision to change his demeanor in a way if you were involved in that at all or if that was a total like Anna decision no it, it was uh, the reason why is because you just wanted to get you know I was always looking at it from Tessa's point of view yes. and I was looking at it from she's a fish out of water and we should be playing catch up with her you know we're, we're now we've now switched to her point of view so you know, it just kind of ups the stakes. Um, if the first time she hears him, he's like, shut the fuck up and listen to me. Yes. You know, it's just kind of like, oh, this, yeah. is, this might not be the easiest job ever. So yeah. that when she wakes up the next morning and she has drool on her mouth and she's looking at her boss, yes. you know, it's all kind of the, the mislead of she's getting fired. So that, for me, that's... Uh, uh, that's where that kind of decision to kind of dial up his, um, you know. Made, no, I think it made sense yeah. for the movie. I'm just honestly, I was just Yeah, no, no, no. Um, yeah. And by the way, like Anna might have another interpretation of that. Sure, you know? yeah. Um, so uh, when my husband interviewed Anna, they talked about filming the club scene and she said it was completely dead silent. I was wondering right. if that... Because it honestly reminded me, it was very David Fincher-esque in The Social Network, where, you know, you have uh -huh. Justin Timberlake like, and Jesse Eisenberg. Um, and I absolutely love the scene. Of course, we have, like, three major cameos in that scene as well. So I just kind of want you to talk about the filming of the club scene, if it was dead silent, and what the decision was to have Anna's and Jen's cameos, and, of course, your daughter's cameo in that scene specifically, because I think a lot of fans were expecting her to pop up in Vance Publishing somewhere again. So what, right. was the, what was the filmmaking like for the club scene? Was it dead silent? And how did you guys decide on this is going to be the scene where we do the cameos? So club scene was very important. 
Um, it's one of my favorite scenes. I mean, oh, good, good. But I love well, it. Well, it also, because it, it, it not only, uh, it, it showed like Tessa's id for me, like she's trashed yeah. and we really kind of get her want yes. that she's still missing Harden. Yes. You know, and we really get to see a different side of her. Um, so I was like, this is important. We need to hire a choreographer. Uh, I want to do this right. Yeah. Um, I told Joe that, um, we had, uh, she had a couple dance rehearsals. Um, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, uh, show you guys some of that. I'll say, you know, for a DVD later and we'll talk about that. She's such a good dancer. It was I mean, the, the aerial no shot idea. of her coming up where you like, where she's looking right. up the aerial shot is gorgeous. Like she looks but so good. Joe at was like phenomenal dancer. Awesome. Um, and I'm like, oh wow, this is going to be great. Cause we also want to just tell the story, you know? Yes. Um, you know, with the net, the reason why you don't have a song playing is you don't know what song you're going to use. You don't know what song you're going to own. Um, <laughs> So what you do is you, we actually do play like 10 seconds of a song and then you just hear a thumb track and the thumb track, uh, the sound guy can eliminate later in post. So you yeah. do that usually when you make a movie, that way if the actors are talking, we don't have to reloop them. And I think Anna might've mentioned that. Okay. So, yeah. You know, they're, they're still able to hear like a beat when they're dancing. So it's not, uh, they still have a, they still have a tempo. Did it take a couple days to do that club sequence specifically? We never had a couple days on this film. <laughs> I know you didn't. That's why I'm, I, 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 yeah. I'm actually shocked with how much of the movie I did see get filmed within one day. Just yeah. all the shots in the yeah, laundry. Shot that I'm like, wow, movie. like Roger got all of that within like 10 hours. <laughs> so Everything I mean, was always a race. Uh, wow. We shot it in 25 days. So there was oh. no... Yeah, it so was crazy. Uh, yeah, crazy. So <laughs> me, um, I had, I got Larry Reedman, who I worked with for on Pretty Little Liars, who I knew could do beautiful and do fast. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so, so for, you know, basically in the limited time you have, uh, um, we try to tell that story in terms of Anna's cameo. I mean, mm -hmm. that's where I get competitive and I'm like, I saw your cameo in the first one. I'm going to do you better. I, uh, yeah. I'll, and she had a line and everything. Yeah. 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 And I said, was that, I said, so was it your idea for her to have her cameo in the club scene then? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it'd be, well. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I was like, and, and I put my daughter in it because I'm like, they'll never cut this. <laughs> That's why she had that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have to worry about hitting the floor. It's Anna's cameo. Um, and it's also kind of a cute little, so tell me what books you've written. I you love know. it. Yes, I you love know, it. It's like, it's, it's like an Easter egg for the fans. Oh, yeah. No, I totally loved it. Everyone, you know? I mean, when I saw it in the theaters, all the fans were like, ooh. Yeah, um, no, it's great. Because she looks great, and Jen looks great, and Medora looks great. And, like, and it's just kind of fun that Anna Todd is at the club where Tessa is. Yeah. That's why, that's why I think that it's so, so funny. Um, well, so, but I also love the part in that club scene um, where we have, where we have like Harden coming and like, that's, you know, not necessarily in the book. Now, like if Tessa kind of had something where she was like, think, you know, making out with this guy thinking it was maybe Harden, but I was wondering what the decision with that was, because as a fan watching the movie, seeing him, even though, you know, she's kind of in a messed up mental state coming in there, I absolutely thought it was like very essential to Tessa's storyline um, and kind of wanted you to elaborate on that in the plan of putting Hero in that scene, Harden in that scene and having it be, you know, having him be a part of the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, um, you know, what was great about having Anna around um, and Jen too, was that um, they would always remind me like the fans will kill you. You know, like I'd be like, what, she can't make out with another guy? He, he cheated on her and she'll yeah. like, kill you. No, <laughs> <laughs> they'll kill like, you. Oh, okay. Um, so I said, well, if that's the case, you know, like we want to be very protective of her character. Uh, uh, you know, and of their relationship and of the why. Um, 
we should see her point of view. We should just kind of see what she sees. Yeah. But she's not just trying to kiss uh, just a guy, but she's wishing it was hardened. And I'm like, you know, if we strobe this, let's just stick Hero in for two seconds. And I and Hero was great because it was his day off. And I'm like, will you come to the club for like five minutes? Wait, so that was like not in the script? Like that was remember. not, that's crazy. It wasn't like, it, it was, it's at a certain point we thought we should do this um oh i'm so glad you, like that's one of the best kisses in the whole movie <laughs> yeah no it was uh uh you know but but like we should get this because and, and it's one of those things where you you try to shoot as much as possible and if it doesn't work then you don't put it in the film and if it does work you know uh and it did it did and it just looked uh yeah it looked great and they looked great yeah, no, it's so, so good. Um, yeah, I love that. So I know this was, act, like, I got this as a lot of, like, fan questions as well. Did you guys end up filming a scene where Hardin verbally apologizes to Tessa about the sleeping with Molly comment? Was that scene ever filmed, or was that moment just not in the this particular script? Because that was kind of a one of the fan questions that I think- yep. I've gotten it, too, many times. Yeah. So what's the, so I mean, like, from, uh, like uh, no, no, no. I have a, um, it was in the bed scene, uh, when they're sharing the bed, um, at, yes. at, at the apartment. Yep. Uh, the 10 what? seconds later. Okay. <laughs> the, the issue for me was that, um, the scene did go longer but it was more like it was after the 10 seconds she rolled over okay and she said no i don't want to do this and he's like i'll go sleep on the floor okay. and they're not looking at each other and he goes by the way i, I never slept with molly oh. um, so that's like and, after they decide they're gonna after Harden and tessa decide they're gonna sleep in the bed together they have that initial moment and then it gets to the other scene so you just clipped that initial conversation we, it, it was it was kind of after the the sexual encounter between them got it you know that okay. that um oh i see okay. we shot it um and when i looked at it i was like you know um it wasn't about cutting for time it was about like mm, they don't have the intimate they don't have the connection they're not looking at each other there's no there's no follow-up from that moment. There's no Got it. having it land. It was just kind of like tacked on. Okay. Um, and I'll take the hit for that. Um, <laughs> you know, and it was also kind of like, and, I, and we went back and forth on it uh, a, a lot of times. And, and uh, you know, the problem also was we, the audience, knew he didn't sleep with Molly. Yes. You know, we knew that. That was just a bullshit thing for him to say in the hallway. Right. Um, you know, so. Right. We had already seen what he did at the fraternity you know, house, he didn't. knowing um, he could do it. So it was, he didn't. it was almost now, like. Look, the pushback could be, but Tessa doesn't. Right. But, right. The, but the thing was, the next scene was Tessa going to see Carol. Um, so it, there was no kind of like discussion about it. Um, okay. So that, that and, and we just thought it was a nicer way to end that scene on 10 seconds. I, I mean, I can't imagine it not being that way and, now. And it's kind so, of, I, always, I prefer leaving, leaving scenes up to the audience's imagination. Like, what happened? Yeah. You know, where did this go as opposed to spoon feeding an audience? Now, yeah. you know, uh, that's, that's an interpretation and, you know, um, but that was that was the reason why. So what are speaking on that then? What were some of the other? I think I saw you either like uh, I think on Twitter you mentioned that there weren't necessarily deleted scenes, but more like extended scenes or maybe Anna. Yeah. Both of you mentioned that as yeah. well. So what's some of the other scenes? Is well, one is there any fully deleted scenes that we don't know about? And two, okay, we have that scene as now like kind of an extended scene. Or was, was there any other scenes that? were extended um, that you guys had to trim down a bit. Yeah, there's <laughs> one other big moment. Um, I mean, there's like little little couplets, you know? And if this was any other movie, um, I would say it's not worth our time. 
but because I have such a reverence for this fandom and they're so passionate and they want to know everything in, an, in, the, in the most loving way that I'm like, who's, it's not up for me to decide what they can and can't say, you know? So um, I'll and say- it's, it's hard to please the fandom because like for me as a fan, there's just going to be some scenes in a book that are more important to other fans than others. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, every but scene I, I in actually, any books are important, I, but it just depends on what you have to put in the actual film. Right, but I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the fandom loves you. <laughs> but I, if, you know, it's like, uh, um, I like the interaction. I like the engagement with that. And I'm not going to please them or I'm going to say, and some of their questions are just like, um, so interesting and so thoughtful um, that I find it kind of like, this is fascinating. I'll probably never have this experience again in my <laughs> career. I'm going to enjoy this. Um, and really kind of have an interaction with, with people who are so passionate about a book and a film. Um, so I will say that like of these little scenes, um, you know, it's not like, usually you see like a year later, the director's cut of this or the yeah. director's cut. That's not the situation with this movie. This is what you saw was pretty much the director's cut. That's awesome. Um, I had really creative control. Anna and I had pretty much creative control on wow. this movie. Um, Thank you for it, because I was gonna. I, I, because I mean, when, when a, when a deal like this happens, you know, books being transformed to movies, and then you come on as a director, I was honestly curious who did have kind of final cut over the movie, because some I have seen it in the cases where sometimes the director like doesn't necessarily have you know a final cut. So oh, it's yeah. awesome that you did. Oh, oh, I didn't have like. I don't have final cut. Um, that's that's reserved for very few directors. I, they could have, they had every right after uh, my ten weeks to go bye bye. <laughs> they didn't, um, you know. Be, and we make it a collaboration. We make it like, what is the best version of this film? So we were there up until the end, um, you know. So, but what I will say is, we're in discussions right now active discussions with, uh, with um, um, to put it on a DVD, all these little couplets uh, for the fans. I'm, yes. We're trying to load, I really want to do a solid for this fandom and really try to give them the kitchen sink. I so, want any and all special features on my Blu-ray, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm like, let's just give them everything, you know? Yeah. Is, you know, grant it. Uh, the, the disappointing thing with the fandom is they want it today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and I, <laughs> oh, uh, because there's legal things and all this stuff. So I can, I will, I will wholeheartedly swear on a stack of Bibles. They will be getting this stuff. Um, the question is, uh, we are trying to, I have to go, you know, I was at Voltage the other day going through boxes of dailies to find some of this wow. stuff. So there's a, you know, because it's all been wiped for uh, yeah. off the internet for piracy and there's no, you know, the editors are on another job. So we're doing, we're doing it and it will get done. It might not get done in the, you know, instant gratification of the Astronators, but it will get done. Got it. Um, like I said, I know we have tons of fan questions to get to, but before we get to that, I wanted to talk about your filming with Selma again, since you hadn't worked with her for so long. And I know right. that you and Anna shot, um, I think in, I think this was told on Instagram, like in her home that day. What was yep. that like to just work with her again for that day? Cause I mean, I think even though I know she couldn't be in the movie, you know, uh, any more than yep. that, but I loved what I think we we see Carol and kind of her vibe and after we collided in that initial scene. So what was it like working with her for that day to get that scene? I mean, it's like I could get weepy talking about Selma. Um, I love it, her. Yeah, she's one of my oldest friends, and you know, she's been through just such craziness with her health. Yeah. Um, that uh, you know, while we were shooting the movie, I was constantly checking in. With, I didn't want to bother her because I knew she was getting better, but I'm good friends with her manager. And I was like, what's the deal? And he's like, it's not going to happen. And I'm like, it is going to happen because <laughs> I'm not going to shoot it now. I'll just wait. 
Oh my God. Yeah. And, and everyone was so cool. Voltage was cool. I'm like, you have to make this happen for me. Yes. Uh, and Joe was great. And so was Dylan Arnold because I'm like, we're going to shoot a scene and she's not going to be in it. And, and it worked great. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very hard to do that because you're only having one side of it and part of it might change. We didn't know how shrill Carol was going to play it, you know? Um, yeah. Or the tone of the scene was, you know, we tried it a couple different ways. Um, so uh, there was a lot to juggle in that, but, but we knew we had that placeholder. And then... Um, I think a couple, you know, like three months after we wrapped or two months after we wrapped, you know, we were working it out with her and I said, we'll, we'll go, we could do it at Voltage, we could do it at her house, we could, whatever makes it easier. And we, we could do it with just like two people. Yeah. Boom guy, a camera guy and me. That's all you need. And that, yeah. <laughs> you know, so the set, I was the production designer. I think we threw up some photos. You so did. Yeah, there was like a picture of um, yeah, yeah, Dylan yeah. and Joe in the back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it looked awesome. And I, I wanted to say, like, I, I, I know how hard it is to do those phone call scenes. And I thought this one played seamlessly. And I was very, very happy to see Selma even in that quick scene versus yeah. having her not be in the movie at all. So yeah, yeah, I think no. all, like all of the after fandom, I think is like completely fine with her having like a quick scene just so she can be in it again, because everybody cool. loved her the first time around so much. Good, good. I'm glad. No, I, I <laughs> and, and uh, it was so cool because I was texting her just like two days ago and I showed her, I sent her a screenshot of the iTunes where After We Collided was number one and Cruel Intentions was number two. I know, it's amazing. And I was like, hey, how about us, you know? <laughs> this is us. A nice yes. moment. Speaking yeah. of cruel intentions, um, I, there's so many references in the movie, the dangerous liaisons on, you know, Tess's Kindle, also right. like the sunglass moment with Kimberly and Vance when they're leaving the hotel and they smile at each other is very similar to Catherine and Sebastian. Is the, are these all little cruel intentions Easter eggs kind of, did you kind of come up with them on the spot or did you know where you were going to place these things kind of throughout the film? I knew I was going to place them. Yeah. I was like, I'll give a little nod, you know, because they're all so connected because, you know, after there's a little bit of a connection between Cruel and After. Yeah, I mean, that's what we talked about on our set visit yeah. is like, yeah. I mean, and that Cruel Intentions is my favorite movie of all time. Everybody who knows me knows that. And when I initially read After, you know, for the first time and the bet scene is revealed, that was my first thought as well. I was like, oh my God, he just... Sebastian her <laughs> you know so I mean like it, it, it was it's literally the bet the same thing and I mean even with in this film um Hardin mentions oh she was one of my former conquests um just the way he's very playful in the scene with Smith when Smith's saying shit fuck and he like trots up to to Tessa it reminded me so much of Sebastian in the nursing home scene with Reese that's he's literally it's that that's such Sebastian vibe um so whether or not that kind of stuff was intentional I appreciated it from you know the cruel intentions fangirl here and how you had those easter eggs throughout the film oh good good <laughs> you're like great <laughs> I mean, like, look, okay you know, and then part of, part of what attracted me to this this story <laughs> especially the second book was oh i get to do the sequel the cruel intentions i never did um i, I you know knowing i killed sebastian um <laughs> that that ended that story i never you know um right but i love the theme of redemption i mean like can you can love survive after betrayal was like a theme i always wanted to explore and wow. we provided that opportunity wow what a cool way to look at it yeah Oh my God, I love that. Oh my God, I love that so much. I didn't even think of it like that. Um, okay, so I have tons and tons of fan questions here. Oh. Um, I know we touched on some of them. Uh, we got a lot of fan questions about dialogue and how much dialogue was improv. Um, I actually spoke with Dylan on set about some of his dialogue being improv, but even Hero has the line being like, oh, it's Bill Gates. I mean, I just didn't know if there was some, how much improv was involved in regards to Trevor's character and any of the other characters in the film. Most of the improv was Trevor. Okay. Because Dylan had that kind of superpower. 
you know, from all those years doing. Um, he's very, very art. quick on his feet. Yeah. And he's super witty. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, and those are the, the favorite moments you have are like happy accidents. You know, like at the nightclub with Mr. Jang, we were doing the scene and it was okay. It wasn't great. And Dylan had told me he spoke Mandarin or a little Mandarin. And I said, you know, we should do a take where this is in Mandarin um, because the other actors spoke Mandarin. Um, and I said, the whole lost in translation thing could kind of be interesting, you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, and just a little lighter and, you know, just, it just shows that Tessa's just completely out of her element. <laughs> yes. some, some fat cat um, CEO guy who's screaming in a, a language she doesn't understand, she should drink out of this bowl. Um, <laughs> I love and, it. And, you know, so we did both ways. We did it both in English and in Mandarin, and, and it ended up, we ended up using the Mandarin version just because it, it, you know, added something. Um, so cool. You know, um, all, all of like Dylan's stuff in the bathroom uh, at the end of the movie, that's all him. That, was I, that I, always going to be an end credit scene? Was no. that, were you always planning on using that in the end credits or were you going to try and use some of that in the film? No, no in an earlier cut, um, he's in the bathroom. He go. he leaves Tessa, he's in the bathroom and they have that moment um, um, Tessa and Hardin that yes. connect in and they go outside and all that. Um, the problem was um, Dylan's so effing funny. It pulled you out of the emotion of the A storyline. Yeah, well, yeah I, I think it worked beautifully as an yeah, yeah, no, scene. Like, That's why I'm so glad. I, I screamed at the fans in the movie theater to stay. <laughs> yeah, kinda, hey, I heard that. I, I saw that. Yeah, hey, we couldn't cut to him because I was like, this pulling, this is taking away from Harden and Tessa, and that should be our focus. I, but he's so damn funny. Let's just put it on the end credits. You know, I loved it so much. Um, yeah, when I spoke with when I spoke with Hero and Joe, kind of speaking of, in regards to going with the flow during the shower scene, Hero said that he believes it was a mistake when he, he like the shower gel, the cap falls off, and all, all, all that comes out. I didn't know if that was a mistake or if that's something that maybe some prop person planned there. Do you remember filming that? And because I mean, his look is genuine genuine shock and he told me he's like I think you know that was not planned to be and like we just kind of went with it um maybe I didn't tell him but I unscrewed the top um no uh, bless Roger Cumble everybody no, well, <laughs> the soap was sexual you, know, you didn't want like a little little pool and like because yeah, he's like oh shit yeah <laughs> like the whole thing what was great about hero is he stayed in character he's awesome yes you know i'll give you a little behind the scenes of that um maybe this will ruin it mm, i don't know um was um <laughs> i'm literally right off camera i'm literally down by their feet for a lot of it um because we went back and forth and a lot of fans picked this up with the shower wand because the shower wand was in the book. Yes. We went back and forth with the shower wand um, and we weren't going to have them hold it. We were going to have them step on it. Okay. Uh, with the water and that and, but the water pressure was terrible that day. So I was literally off camera holding the shot, you know, and I think you could see in a couple of shots, like water squirting up and I'm like, I was like, God, I wish somebody took a photo of that. I just like the most. Well, I remember like a behind the scenes photo during filming last year where you were like in like a, I don't know if it was like the shower hotel room and you were like squeezing behind there. So, I mean, we all oh, yeah, knew that, that you were. Dylan. Yeah, no, I was with Dylan. Okay. This was more kind of like, but we ended up, uh, we didn't need, it was such a beautifully intimate scene between the two of them. I, we didn't need um, the prop lending to his yeah um 
so uh, we just got rid of that. Um, but the soap, <laughs> no, the soap was like, it, it added a level of sexuality. To it did. Me. No, it looks so, that was like the biggest part of the teaser trailer when that dropped for me. I was like, oh my God, they really meet our, he really meant sex, sex, and more sex and an R rating this time around. <laughs> so what other fun things, a lot, lots of fan questions, Jen's um, book said, what other fun things did you and Hero and Joe do besides puzzles during filming? I'm going to disappoint everybody. <laughs> I'm deathly dull. Um, um, you know, because uh, we were on a tight schedule, besides puzzles, I l never left my hotel room. Um, Probably so pooped at the end of every day, 25 days of filming. Yeah, but even on the weekends, I was like the fuddy-duddy who just stayed in my room, did puzzles, and, and just planned the following week. And uh, uh, they went out. Um, you know, I was the guy going, go to bed. <laughs> You're like the dad on set. <laughs> I am the dad on set. I was like, go to bed. <laughs> uh, no more fun. You know, they'd post their pictures out of restaurants. I'm like, no. I, um, I know you're just like, I'm just going to be chilling here. Um, okay. how, I know we talked about this a little bit um, between the two of us, but how many takes did Hero have to do running after the amb ambulance? I know that was one shot, but I mean, we see Hero running through towards yeah, the yeah, yeah. Tessa's in the ambulance, shows in the ambulance. Uh, it looked like a great shot because they're both so clear. How many times did you guys have to film that scene? We did three takes. Um, we did three takes, you know, again, like that was like just, we had like three, four scenes to do that day. So we, we never had time to screw around. Um, and I was like, how fast can you run? Um, and he goes fast. Um, so I think the first, yeah, I was like, we were like, he can't run that fast. Um, it's so fast that I thought that it was a double shot. I thought you did a split oh, no, shot, geez. but it looked awesome. We like, at the first time he caught the ambulance too fast. So I was like, well, that didn't work. Wow, he's fast. Um, playing all that and, football in England. <laughs> and I was also like, keep running. So on the second take, we, we were smarter and we were like, go. Awesome. Yeah. No, it was so good. So what was, I mean, I, this is pro, this is kind of like, I'm sure you have so many different things because I know it was such like a quick shoot, but what was, I guess, the hardest scene to film in regards to having such a, you know, quick turnaround for shooting? What was like something like, you know, that was like a hard scene to, to get? I mean, they were all kind of challenging scenes just because of the, the, um, the time. Um, I'd say the New Year's Eve fight. Because was, of the choreography and stuff involved? And like, you, did you guys oh, only have one no, night to shoot just that? Just the fight with Harden. Oh, uh, okay. Um, just because it was brutal. Just because it was just... You know, it's not fun. Yeah. It's not, you know. I think someone tweeted us, I hope someone hugged Joe after that scene because right. he needed a hug. <laughs> you know, Joe's such a thoughtful, it was interesting, like, I, I thinking back on that evening, um, you know, I rem Joe went on a long walk, I remember. Joe kept to herself. Yeah. Just didn't want to be around anybody. And you, you, all you could do is, you know, provide the actor with the space they need. Yes. But, um, and Hero was kind of upstairs. Um, um, but, uh, you know, it just, I'm, I'm, I was relentless in just breaking both of them, you know, and it's not fun. <laughs> So did you, so when, so when you got, I know since it was such a quick shoot, did you guys have the Molly and Tessa fight scene, like on, that was one day, and then the aftermath of Harden and Tessa's fight with the scene we're particularly talking about, was that a separate filming day as well? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that up because I'm gonna answer that wrong. Um, <laughs> I oh, it's funny because when I talked to Joe on set, you guys were about halfway um, through filming and she had told me that she, they, you guys had not gotten into like a lot of the deeply emotional scenes yet. And of course, I know that movies are filmed out of order most of the time. So I, I'm actually was wondering if that's something um, 
where the emotional scenes and a lot of like the more intimate scenes, if that was done towards, you know, later in the shoot. Did you save all the emotional right. stuff towards later in the shoot? No, it was literally sometimes it was just based on locations and, and, and actor availability. I think we had three days at the frat house. Um, but there was a lot to cover there. Yes. So I think those were two different nights, the Molly fight and then the Harden fight. Um, but, um, yeah, but they were all done at like 2 a.m. Yeah. They were tired, you know. <laughs> and I, I think, you know, I, I had mentioned when I uh, wrote something about Hero's rap that he ignored me. And what I meant by that was, um, you know, he's screaming at her, Yeah. you know, and we hadn't shot his side and, you know, at 2 a.m. you could lose your voice. That's what you, I mentioned that. Is that what you were referring to when you That's said that? I meant. Like, like he could be like, if you're screaming at 2 a.m. over and over and over again, and I was doing 10 takes of wow. just, you know, and like kept the camera rolling. Wow. You know, because you don't want to like, you want to be there for the actor. And like, if they're breaking down, I'm like, go again, go get, let's do it, do it. You know what I mean? Just, you know, there's just like, there's one little moment of Joe's where she just gulps. And she has yeah. a mascara and it's just devastating. It you is. Know? Yeah, she's like, I don't trust you. Like, it's yeah, just yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah, and it's just, sometimes you just, you shoot and you shoot and you shoot to find that moment, you know? But Hero was so great because he just kept going. Yeah, no, it's, needed as an actor you know plus i mean that that scene serves as kind of like the climatic scene in this like particular film because then we see yeah. the aftermath of the nine days and then of course like later in the engagement party um another fan question is um did you guys ever film the moment where landon tells tessa just because he can't love you the way you want him to doesn't mean he doesn't love you with everything he has i know that was like a major fan favorite line of landon's in the books was that something that you guys filmed at all or just wasn't we filmed in the it. no we filmed it. it i'll tell you exactly um okay. and it was actually a cruel intentions easter egg um <laughs> It was right after um, um, she comes down stairs and with the coffees and Dylan and uh, you know, they go to the yep. conference and yes. they for the deal. Uh, we cut to outside the chancellor's house. Mm -hmm. There's a scene with Hardin and Landon. Yes. Um, all that stuff and then what's happening is upstairs tessa's there listening in because in the book she's staying at the she chancellor stays at the yeah at yeah. Yes. yeah 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 and uh hardin left and then tessa you know peeks around the window and landon says did you hear that and, and she's like yeah and he goes just because he you know that that line yes and the problem was um everyone a lot of people were like how did she get there did she teleport you know like how is she how did she get from seattle there so fast um yeah. and it and it just bumped so many people that I, and i was and i uh you know i still wanted it um but uh you know you win some you lose some um but uh, uh so it was mainly cut from like the actual film standpoint of the viewer being kind of confused why Tessa would be in. Yeah, we, we uh, lost the audience with geography. It was not about cutting for time. It was just about, you know, that the, it leads itself to the, you know, like, you know, when I see like, oh, was the film rushed or what, you know, why would you want to shoot more stuff in the book? And it's like, you know, they, the thing is with, like with this movie, you get the gig and then they're like, what happens on any movie is they go, here's your budget, yeah. you know, and <laughs> five days to make it. Yeah. And then you go 25 days. Now to give you context, Cruel Intentions was 36 days and that was a short shoot. It is. Um, yeah. um, but 25 days, I was like 25 days. That's, you know, that's insane. They're like, well, you did falling in love in 20 days. And I'm like, 
Yeah, but. <laughs> and I was in New Zealand for that. <laughs> um, uh, like light, this is. Intense. That's like a director's dream to film in New Zealand. It was like the first Thank Netflix you. film that, that filmed that was filmed in New Zealand. I loved it. I loved yeah. It. But uh, um, you know, and it's one of those things where you could go, look, I could not do it. Um, you know, um, but. Uh, from their side, and I always understand this, like they're crunching the numbers and they're looking at everything and that's the number they come up with where they're taking less risk. Yeah. So I make the decision as the director, I would rather shoot less scenes and do it right than shoot, let's shoot two hours of filming and not have enough time to cover it or get enough takes or do it right and have a longer sloppier film. I'd rather have it, I made the decision, I'm like, we're not gonna waste the scene here. We don't have time. We just yes. don't have time. So that's where, uh, that's where you just have to kind of be very, very, you know, judicious in, in how, you know, we, you know, it's yes. like, uh, if you compare it to like a Harry Potter, which is <laughs> two and a half hours, it's like, great, yeah, but they have, a uh, a year <laughs> to shoot, plan. you know? Or a yeah, I mean, I, that, it's funny that you bring that up because, um, you know, a lot of the fandom, and this has even been like a question of the first film too, um, you know, these movies are obviously made for the fans. Why not make the film longer than an hour and 45 minutes? I mean, that's something that, that's like a no, question. It's, an, it's a great question. And I think like, and I, I this is me not speaking on behalf of anybody, but, you know, after sold years ago, you mm -hmm. know, and yeah. it was in development hell at, I think, Paramount, I'm not sure, you know, and it's only because of the force of Jennifer Gibgott, uh, who got it out and then got it made. Yeah. Um, but since then, you've seen the rise of like the limited series, you know, and you've seen normal people and you've seen Big Little Lies and you've seen, and now that's more kind of, and, um, and and that's a little more for fans because then you have 12 hours to tell the story um as opposed to um two hours or two and a half hours you know or a so, very large book <laughs> yeah 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 so so the my only reason that i i would have made a longer book to appease the fans i just didn't have the the day count to do it Done. right yeah so. Yeah, I mean, hey, if every, I mean, I know it's like if after was an anthology, you know, something like normal people would be like, yes, you'd have a lot more time to explore. But I feel like everything major was captured beautifully here in the film. Um, another, I mean, were there any scenes in the book that weren't, you know, that, that were, that were not in the script that you wish were in the movie? I think we touched on a lot of the. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like. If I was making a limited series, I would have gone, I would have done Zed. I would have done, I love Sam Larson. Yes. Love, you know, I. He's so great in it. I would have just a chapter a week, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like, but but uh, uh, that's the art of adaptation. So mm -hmm. you, you pick and choose. Plus we, you had to kind of still flow with what, you know, Jenny did within like the first film as well. And like, kind of touch, you know, touch that and yeah. make this. Yeah, this. totally, totally. Yeah, um, I, this is something that I'm just personally wondering. We got this a lot. Um, the scene where Hardin is on the phone with Trevor after Tessa gets into the accident, I just appreciated, like, I feel that Hardin as a character had so much more to do, I feel like emotionally in the scene and Hero just really shows how great of an actor he is in this movie. Is there any type of direction you gave to him prior to filming that scene? Or is that, tell me about that scene because I feel like- Yeah, no, I, was, um, I uh, <laughs> you know, that was at the, first off we did both, we did the scene with Landon and the phone call together. So yeah. we didn't break them up. Okay. So he had Shane giving him the goods, you know, yeah. um, um, my only hero is so great with that stuff. I mean, he's just so great. And my only direction to him, honestly, was like play it as if she's not going to make it, um, you know, oh, wow. 
That's the only thing I think I said to him. Because at that point, he doesn't know what her status was, really. He doesn't. All he knows is the information he got from Landon. She could have died, mm -hmm. you know? That, you yeah, know? no, I mean, I, I think that that, that is, I, I'll never forget watching you guys film. And it was literally just Hero walking up those steps in the lobby. And I just remember this one time you being like, where is that fucker? <laughs> like yeah. going up there and chase Trevor. Right, I just, right. I'm like, I'm I totally like, <laughs> and what was so great was working with Shane and, and Hero on that scene where we kind of, we rehearsed that quite a bit. And, and that was a discovery where we were like, you know what? I think it's fucking Shane's like done. Yeah. I, our land is done you know he comes mm -hmm. in there like i'm gonna fuck this guy up yeah because he's like i've had enough of like defending yeah. my friend against this dude now and it's yeah. two guys who are kind of broken you know because yeah no i mean it's a fake i love it it's yeah. fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. um so i mean we've kind of talked about this before but like you know a lot of these movie franchises you know have so many different directors we talked about harry i mean harry potter right, has right, right, right. directors um i don't really know how much you can say but like is i mean this is a question that we got a lot i mean why are you not directing you know after three and four after we fell in after ever happy and i'm just personally wondering i know directors have their own way of going about right process but have you exchanged any like notes or conversations or anything with the new director Castiel Landon besides good luck yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um and she doesn't need it I you know I'll say this um it's a couple that you know um um I know it's like 60 minutes well, I get the sense. No, 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 but, but, but the fans yeah. deserve, uh, that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this because, you know, kind of set the record straight. First of all, Voltage is not the villain. Um, they've been amazing to me. I had more creative control on this movie. Um, that's great. I'm also, I'm also a bull in a china shop when I make a movie, you know, and I have very strong opinions. Um, and I had very strong opinions when I made this, especially with the comedy, you know, which, yes. you know, like I was very kind of like, I need to do this. I'm going to go out on a limb. Um, and it, you know, that definitely unsettled uh, people, different people at various times. Cause he's like, what is he doing? I personally loved it, and I feel like yeah, no, no, no. And everybody I, 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 in I, life has a little I, comedy, but I'm glad know. that you touched on that as well, because that is another question that about like the comedy add-ins and stuff in the film. Yeah, and I'll say um, it wasn't like, I didn't go when I met with Anna and Jenna, go, I'm going to make this hilarious. <laughs> um, I didn't really, I don't really think about genres. I don't think about it with Cruel, and I didn't think about it with this. I'm just trying to tell a story. Um, what happened was um, it was important that we separate uh, Hardin and Tess at the beginning of the film and take her on a journey at Vance Publishing. And I wanted Trevor to be a threat. I wanted him to be a threat. And if he was just kind of just good looking and dull, I, you know, I was like, oh, I'm bored. Um, so he had to be charming and funny, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They had to have yeah. some kind of banter and like, we didn't have a lot of time to root for them, do you know? And even though it's not a romantic triangle, you still want complications as a film, as a film, every, you know, I did want, when I was, people were like, who, were you team Trevor or team Harden? I was like, I'm team whoever I'm shooting that scene with. <laughs> So when I'm shooting with Trevor, I'm Team Trevor. Right. You know? Um, um, so that's like the mentality that you had to be at. And yeah, like you're yeah. fighting for the best scene when you're shooting the scene. So, you know, in that moment, his go-to was his just he's his wit and his charm. And it made the scenes kind of lighter. Mm -hmm. Um and once I realized how gifted. Josephine was at that, at, you know, the, the lighter stuff, like, she's amazing. She's amazing. You know, um, I can't and, wait to see her in Amy Poehler. I mean, there's, like, there's nothing, there was nothing in her resume, you know, yeah. 
said that. No. <laughs> uh, the Joey King Ryan Philippi Horror film. And, yeah. you know, I was looking at this stuff and I was like, this, where is this? Yes. Uh, and I was like, this is amazing. So I started to lean into that a little, knowing at a certain point I was going to get out of it because I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to, you know, keep the drama. It's hard to sustain for yeah. that long. And, and by being lighter in the front half of the movie, the emotional stuff gets weightier for me. That's just my opinion. Now, knowing that, um, yeah, I read the other books while I was shooting the movie. So, so I didn't like screw up, you know, I, I wanted <laughs> to know what was going on. And I was, when I was, I, I decided to break down the other two movies um, just to see. Okay. And I'll be completely honest with you, I couldn't crack it. Meaning like the book, like After We Fell was just such a I long, couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't, um, I couldn't, if I'm going to make a movie and I'm going to, you know, this is my first sequel. If I'm going to make a movie, oh. it's got to be the best movie I've ever made. Mm -hmm. That's how I got to go into it because it's like a year or two of my life. Um, and I was like, I know I rocked after we collided. Yes. I know it. You know, I knew it. And I and sometimes I went on a limb and I'm like, I'm gonna be right. I'm gonna be right. And I didn't have that superpower with after we fell, because we know it's a heavier book. Mm -hmm. Um it's a denser book. Um and I'm like, I don't want my follow-up to be not as good. You wow. Know? So do you and, think and I have that, that, I have that ability to go, and it wasn't, by the way, it wasn't like, I, I didn't, they weren't like, please, Roger. <laughs> um, the conversation just died out, you know, it, it just kind of like, um, but I didn't want to, you know, at the same time, you don't want to say anything because you don't want to be like, you don't want any kind of negativity going on while your movie's about to come out that you, you know. Sure. Um, and I am a fan of like, I am a fan of the Harry Potter movies. And I am a fan that like um, all these different directors have, have done them and bring their own kind of thing to it. And all, the only thing I was hoping, and I, and I had, was privy to zero conversation. Okay. You know? I had finished after we uh, collided in January mm -hmm. and I stopped talking to pretty much everybody. Um, yeah. And not because I'm like, I'm not talking to you. It's just kind of like, well, we've been living together. Let's for like six months. Yeah. Pandemic, <laughs> and I got my own problems. Um, yeah. um, I was so happy that they, you know, I have a lot of testosterone, and I come from it with a lot of testosterone. <laughs> um, I just do. Um, my guy. <laughs> and I was like, God, I hope they pick a woman. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the first film was female directed and I mean, I'm yeah. excited to see what Castile does. I think I am so excited and I'm like, and I was like, oh, good, good. This is yeah, so I, but and, that, and that the only thing I, uh, only thing when I, you know, a very passionate fandom, I was like, she went to Harvard. <laughs> she's, gotta be dumb. she's gotta be smart. <laughs> you know. I bet she's crushing it. Yeah. You know? but well, I haven't, but I, do I talk to her? No. Do I talk to Hero and Joe? I don't. I don't. Um, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if I was directing a movie, I wouldn't want the previous director talking to the cast. I would never. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You're trying to like respect their process. And it sounds to me that like you were, you know, let's say you're happy with this installment that you were able to provide for the after -fringe. Yeah. Like I'm and, like, and you, I'll yeah. Be, and trust me, I'll be watching after we fell, and I'll be like, "Fuck, I didn't think of that." <laughs> yeah, and no, I'm excited to see what she does. With yeah, I'm, I'm so excited, and I so I, you know, I love this fandom, and I love this franchise, and and like, I'm glad that I could be like, "Oh, I did number two. I'm very yeah. proud of it," you know, and let's see what else they do. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping they'll we'll have a nice Blu-ray box set, you know, when all of this is over. Um, last question for you, Roger. Yeah. This is a ton of, you know, everybody 
you know, we've, we've talked about Hero and Joe a lot today, but, and you've said so many nice things in regards to them about, you know, their acting and their performances and everything like that. But what is like your favorite thing about both Hero and Joe as people? I mean, this might sound trite, but they're, they have the best laugh and smile. I mean, they just do. They just <laughs> the do. sweetest of all time. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. You get either of them mm -hmm. to, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, that's what's so funny. It's like with the, with the fandom, especially with her, um, um, you know, she's like Helen of Troy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, that's what I say. She's like, she's like the one millennial that doesn't love using social media. And like, oh, yeah, no, I know. And that's, uh, yeah, I know. That's, yeah, and, and that drove me crazy. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, great. We have the two millennials who shun social media lucky us <laughs> except for Gary posted a lot the other day which i'm like i'm ex i was excited about yeah. him like that. and and by the way i utterly respect them for their choices yes. and that's where i there's a vacuum and that's where i'm like well i'm a 54 year old guy i'm just gonna dive in because uh i want you know the fandom to kind of hear but i i don't think i don't think it has anything to do with their lack of love for the for the franchise. It's oh yeah, no, I mean, I spoke, I speak with actors all the time and like, I mean, social media a lot of the time is more of a, for me and like my husband, it's more of like a personal thing mixed with work, but a lot of people it's mainly just for work. And like, it's a lot, I mean, when you have a big following like that, it's a, it's a lot of pressure in regards to posting. So, I mean, I, I, I understand when a lot of these younger actors don't, you know, love using it for that type of way. But I mean, you know, hey, everyone is doing their own thing. I mean, yeah, I, 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 it drives me crazy and I utterly admire them. Yeah. You're you like, know, that, that I, I, utterly, I would not, I don't have that depth to do that. <laughs> if I was their age, I'd be on it all the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's, what know, I, that's what I'd said. Well, Raj, you, you know, know, what's crazy is like, I'll say is like when we were shooting, when we were shooting after we collided in Atlanta, a smattering of people at the hotel would recognize oh. them. Like yeah. very little though. And Joe is a chameleon. Yeah. You know, like you wouldn't really be able to tell who she is. I mean, I would, but. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I mean, even maybe. like, you know, she, she, she's a chameleon that way. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, um, I saw that Beatlemania stuff in Sophia that day one they were shooting. I'm like, oh my God. I was, I mean, I was just, I mean, it was kind of cool. Yeah, you're just yeah. like, this is going to be a different experience when I'm filming this movie. Yeah, they really are kind of taken off. So it's, it's a, and, and by the way, at the end of the day, it's all about Anna Todd. Yes, all yes. Of because of, you know, the greatest thing, and I'll end on this, the greatest, you know, and I'd say this to her a lot when we were shooting, that there was a point, whatever, 10 years ago, I don't know. She's in a trailer. Her husband is serving our country. Yeah. You know, and she's writing a book on her phone. And I'm sure people would say, that's, no one's going to read that. No one's going to do that, yeah. you know? And, and I say to her often, I go, you said no. You, you ignored everybody. Yeah. And that is the greatest takeaway for the fandom, for anybody who's aspiring to do this, you know, just don't listen to the, the naysayers and don't listen to people who say you can't, you know? Yeah, no, I, I just, I mean, I witnessed it firsthand um, in regards to the, you know, relationship that you had on set. And I feel like you were always like, empowering her and Jen and oh, Joe yeah. and like all every single you know like you know woman around you you were just like always wanted to hear like their thoughts and um I just appreciated how you know respectful you were of Anna's work and the fandom and that's why we have after we collided today so I just want to say as a fan thank you so I mean it's her, it's her baby and she's the reason why we're here and that was um <laughs> You know, so I, it was, uh, that was easy, you know, it's like, uh, but yeah, so really at the end of the day, it's all about Anna Todd. 
Yes, and she's queen and one of my idols, and I love her so much. But Roger, you are one of my idols too. Oh, You're one of my favorite you. directors ever. I have Cruel Intentions posters like all over my home <laughs> office <laughs> here. <laughs> um, right over your shoulder. I know. I have Sarah here, here. Like, I mean, I have right. everywhere in this house. Um, but yeah, Roger, thank you so much for your time today and answering so many of these fan questions. There was a lot of fan questions, you know, after yep. we've all seen the movie now. Um, so I appreciate your time so much and I can't wait to see what you do next. Oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye uh, thanks, Roger.